What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Sam's character in Scream 6. Now, I want to do this kind of video for several of the characters. I want to start with Sam. Maybe we'll do some other topics Scream-related, then go back to the other characters. But Melissa Barrera and Samantha Carpenter deserve a shout-out. I had promised I was going to do it. But honestly, she's my favorite character in Scream 6. I love what I'm seeing online for her because, genuinely, it does seem like a lot of people love her character. Character, whether they already did like her character and they're saying, oh, good, everybody's kind of caught up at this point, right? Or whether they were kind of like me. I'll explain where I kind of came from. I love and adore her character in Scream 6. I did a rankings video of all 14 main characters, let's say, in this movie, and I think she's by a mile. If it was like a tier list thing, she is definitely in a different tier, and then there's kind of everybody else, in, in my opinion. So I want to talk about what made her special in this, but first, let's go through, just in case you guys didn't know new viewers and, and whatnot my experience with Sam and Melissa you know going into this so five I was very vocal and it's why I feel so happy that I can talk about how great she is now because I was very mixed on her so what I've been saying for Scream 5 wasn't that much of a fan I liked her towards the end I think really the the house party on I thought she was great I thought Melissa really I don't know came into her own or came into the role of like the psycho when Sam kind of goes nuts on Richie and now that's a big part of Scream 6 but that's not all of Scream 6 right to be honest with you the other parts of Scream 5 when she's trying to be more human like is where I honestly found problems whether it was the acting whether it was the writing I would like to say I feel like both were gigantically, to honestly give Melissa Brera herself credit, the writing I do believe is better. I think Sam goes through more things. But let me throw this out here. I had teased this in my rankings video. I was doing a live stream a little while ago and people had talked about some of the more deep dive interviews that were happening with some of the cast of this movie. And somebody had mentioned Melissa. And there was a couple of different interesting things with Melissa, one of which she talked about how the actual idea of the movie changed quite a bit from the very first draft to then the first day when they started filming it was a pretty different film found that very interesting but the second thing I found interesting is I want to give her specifically Melissa Barrera a lot of credit for almost saving Sam's character so you can watch the I believe it's a collider extra interview but what's interesting is the way she says it and I'm going to read into it a little bit the way she describes it is Sam being this you know kind of hard-nosed you know she she goes through all this stuff you know she's kind of gritty and she fought, Melissa fought, for Sam to be a more well-rounded character, that she would feel things, and you kind of see that other side of her. And when you watch the movie, and we'll talk about why Sam's so good in this film, it's for a variety of reasons. Number one, she she's incredible when she's a nut job. She's powerful. She feels strong. I actually feel afraid for other people, not even her. I feel more afraid for the ghost face killers than her because I know she can handle herself. But honestly, some of the best moments Sam has in this movie is her interaction with other people and her emotion. Something that they tried a little bit with Five, and I thought she was always upstaged by somebody else. I talk about the hospital scene in Scream 5. I've always said, Jenna, when, when Sam and Tara are going back and forth. I actually think Tara is the better character and the more believable emotional character there. I think Jenna kind of outacted. Maybe the, the lines were better, whatever it may be, but that's what I've always thought. So fast forward to now, I think it's reverse. I think Sam slash, you know, Melissa Barrera, I think she carries scenes. I think she's the primary reason a lot of these scenes are so good. She's helped out, and, you know, her interaction with other people is a big bonus, but her herself, she's the reason, I believe, on her own that she's so good. And I, again, just want to keep giving her that praise because it's a complete 180, I think, from Scream 5. But you also got to give Melissa credit because if she didn't fight for it, and she said, you know, she had meetings with them. She talked about her concerns with the character, that she wanted certain things that were not in there originally. So like without her fighting, we do not get the Sam that we have in this film. So I think she deserves a lot of credit for that. So let's talk about, you know, kind of her arc in this film, some of my favorite kind of scenes throughout it. And we can start with some of the more hardcore stuff, right? Sam kind of going nuts. It's a big part of her character. I think she leans into it. Well, number one, kind of underrated almost, the trance, which is what I'm going to kind of like trademark it. When she kind of goes under a trance with the mask at the end, or when she grabs the knife, or when she puts the hand on Billy's, uh, you know, costume's glass, and Tara snaps her out of it, right? Basically by just saying like one or two words, she snaps out of it. But I think she sells that. She sells the idea that, like, 
he's inside her head and he, and she's like this close to going to that side. And I think she kind of does that really well. But then also just her craziness. I mean, her stabbing Ethan was awesome. Really her back and forth with Bailey during the monologue. You know, she's the one who starts to turn the tables, right? When she insults Richie directly to his face. And then Kirby, you know, kind of interrupts. And that gives them the time to escape and move to a different part of that scene. But, you know, her acting and Sam as a character kind of being ruthless and just laying into Richie. I thought it was incredible. I thought it was incredibly well done. And then again, her brutalness with Detective Bailey, with Ethan, it's extremely, extremely good. And I know it's Roger's voice and obviously the writing when it comes to the phone call with Bailey at the end. But what I tend to do is I assign ghost face killings or phone calls. I try to assign them to the character that it's supposed to be. Because I mean, factually, in the film franchise, it is those characters. So does it make them more cool, less cool, like things like that? So like that Sam on the phone to Bailey, which is a great, great phone call, even at the end when he's saying, like, you know, who would they believe? Probably the one that's still alive. Love it. Not just because it's a nod to Demi Lovato's song, or maybe she wrote it because of that line, but it's just so well done. And, you know, Melissa had talked about, that is her. That's her underneath the mask. She put the mask on. She put the robe on. So that's all her. I mean, come on. It's incredible. Not just the brutalness of it, but just how it's shot. Again, if you want to give credit to who's supposed to be on the phone, like it's not Melissa talking and they change it, like they warp it to Roger's voice. It's Roger's voice, but you got to give it to Sam as the character. So again, from the brutalness, it's incredible. She's just as good, if not far, far better than what she was already really good at, I would say, with Scream 5, that darkness, that kind of fighting between it. But everything else in this film is also where she shined. I've talked about this before. It really stems almost right from the beginning. So actually, the first time you see her is when she's doing the, the therapy thing, which I thought was great because especially how it ends, right? She admits to kind of what happened. She also says, like, it felt right. Like, it felt right to do what she did to Richie which I think just kind of added to her character. And you got to remember, it's also the acting for all of these scenes. It's not just the words coming out of her mouth, but you got to believe she actually means it or she feels something in these moments. And Melissa does all that. So the thing with Stone, I thought was awesome. Even early on when she tases the guy, I thought was a lot of fun. And then the conspiracy angle, right, starts to, and she mentions it to Stone, but it really starts to take place when they're leaving the party, when, she, when the girl comes up, right, spills the thing. I think that's more of a well-written part of this film. Like, I think Melissa does a great job as well. But I think how it's written and how you're supposed to kind of feel for Sam, it worked. Like, maybe it was a gamble. Maybe they felt it was a gamble. Maybe they didn't. But I immediately felt like I was more on her side. I genuinely believe this. I felt like I was more on her side than ever before in Scream 5. Where it's like, I know you're kind of psycho. I know you fight with Billy kind of in your head. You did kill Richie in a way that, you know, past final girls maybe would not have done. But at the same time, you're not an evil person, right? Like you didn't you didn't actually do the conspiracy like whatsoever, right? And so you have all this stuff, the news stations, right? They're watching the TV. And this is stuff that's played like all over New York where they're reporting like, hey, the number one suspect is Sam because there's rumors she may have done all of Woodsboro. And like, of course, she knows she didn't do that. Of course, her group knows she didn't do that. So I think that's just a really good concept like that's just well written that's just well thought out where it's like you feel for her because it, it's unfair it's unfair that's actually probably the word it's unfair that this is happening to her and now again this is where it bounces back between Tara kind of consoling her and her going back and forth love the emotion at the the dinner scene right love the emotion after Annika dies where you know she's crying she's not crying as much as she has in other scenes and Danny goes up to her and says like you know this isn't your fault and she says but it is again and Melissa sells it, but also Sam as a character. It's like they've done this before. Like Sydney's had these feelings too, right? Where all of it's on her. So if she has other people kind of get in the way, she's inadvertently putting them in danger because she knows that ghosts, you know what I mean? So like they know what they're doing, but they also have no choice over it. So like Sam, it really is Sam's fault because like if Sam does just kind of give herself up, nobody else dies. 
but then she dies. And also that's not how like friends or family works. So it is her fault, but it's really not right. And that back and forth with Danny, I thought was incredible. I thought her selling the Gale death that wasn't a death, but her crying there, I thought was awesome. Even, and then I guess one of the final scenes would be when she said she was going to give herself up. Right when Shad and Mindy and Tara are pretty broken because you know they've gone through a lot and they're going to continue to go through a lot, and she says like, "Well, what if I just gave myself up? It would stop them from coming after you. It would just be me." And then you know Tara stands up to say, "You know, you you saved us, or without you, we wouldn't be here. So obviously, we have to do the same thing for you." Loved it. Again, a lot of these back and forth things. Number one, a lot of what they had in five was between like Sam and Richie, which was just a different dynamic, or even like Sam and Dewey, eventually Sam and Gail and Sam and Sydney, or Sam and Tara. But even when that happened, as I said, I actually think Tara kind of outshined her. She was the better character. When it comes to this one, well, number one, Sam's doing it to more people, right? So she's got Danny, she's got Tara, but now she's also got Mindy and Chad, which she really didn't riff, like go back and forth off of in five. So she has these kind of new playmates that she kind of gets to experiment with, right? Again, Danny being a very different dynamic, and he's very different as a person than Richie was. She's got the dynamic with Gail when they kind of talk about, you know, losing people and their moms or their, their parents, right? Really, really good. So she's given more. I think in this film by a lot than what she was given in five she's not just given more from the brutal side of things and being the lead like she was in five but she's also now got depth not to say she would have had zero depth without Melissa like injecting herself in it but I I really do kind of want to believe that Melissa definitely added like I don't know I'd love to know this right and it's the, the sad truth is we'll never know what are these scenes or what wasn't in that script that she really want? I mean, she, she gave like ideas, but what was the actual scenes that because Melissa held these meetings with the directors and the writers and the producers, what did they add? Did they add the Tara and Sam talk at the table? Did they add Sam kind of giving herself up? Did they add the Danny and, and Sam thing where he says to trust nobody and it's not your fault? Like what was added or what like kind of intricacies were added to her character that weren't there before? Because whatever was added, if there are any of these scenes that we've just highlighted in this video, Melissa deserves a lot of credit because she kind of, I don't know if she saves Sam because I think Sam would still be a pretty good character if you remove a couple of these things. But like having all these things together, I, I'm really dead serious and I'm so happy to be saying it. She's not just the best character, right? Which is, both of these are subjective things. She's the best character in Scream 6. She's also my favorite character, which is awesome. I've talked about this before. Now going into Scream 7, it doesn't mean take your foot off the gas, right? And in fact, because of how she ends, where I really still think, again, she's this close to going crazy and to stepping over that line, not permanently, but really getting lost in it and not being able to be pulled out so easily. I think there's plenty that you can still do that's really cool with her character in Scream 7. And you just keep adding, right? You, you don't take your foot off the gas. But with that being said... You have now, in my opinion, established her as a bona fide, like, great character. You don't really have to worry about... Now, again, that's not to say in the next movie she's just an empty shell and you don't give her anything. You have to keep kind of evolving this, but I don't think you have to worry about her. Or at least I don't, right? Going into 6, Sam was a big question mark. If she's not a good character in 6... This movie suffers for it. If she's an amazing character in six, the movie rises with her. And thankfully, that's what happened. But that was not a guarantee. But now going into seven, I really don't have a question in my mind that she can do it or not. Right now, it's okay. I know she can handle this, whether she's just a better actress now or whether everything kind of worked and gelled together in Scream 6. It, it works. It's perfect. So you keep that and you bring in a Scream 7. Now you worry about the other maybe issues that people have with Scream 5 and Scream 6. But you definitely don't have to worry about Sam anymore. And that's, you know, from a character coming from what I thought of her in 5 to what I think of her now in 6. It's one of the greatest turnarounds. I don't watch too, too many movies, especially horror movies, but it's got to be one of the best turnarounds I've ever seen of a character. Truly, truly. So let me know what you guys think in the comments about Sam's character. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I hope to see you all on the next one.